Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel, Ember on Nate Reacts. T today we are watching, we are reacting to things only 3% of humans can do. Anyway, let's start. Raising one eyebrow is easy while your friend struggles in vain to work out how to do it. You were probably... It is easy. I can raise both. Probably born with the ability. It's a great talent if you want to enhance a joke or tell someone you know they're a liar without saying it out loud. So it's not that useful really, but it is fun. Only 30 to 40 percent of people can raise either their right or. That is, that is weird. Only 30 to 40 percent of people can raise it. Like, what? left brow and being able to do it with both is even more rare how do they do it well 24 percent of people are born with that talent but you'll have noticed that that's a much lower percentage than the number of people who can do it so it is something you can learn just stand in front of the mirror and hold one eyebrow up and the other one down in your hands that will teach your face muscles how to do it and eventually you'll be able to do it without your hands One talent that always seems to impress people is if you can prove how long your tongue is. Very My tongue is not long at all. Very few people on earth have this ability to touch the tip of their nose with their tongue. Only about 10% of people can do it. It's quite shocking and will probably get you a round of applause if you can do it, but it might not be such a good thing. It's sometimes called the Gorlin sign, and it's used by doctors to identify a syndrome. That's because while it's a rare ability for most people, 50% of the people with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome can do it. The syndrome isn't too severe, luckily. It's a group of rare genetic connective tissue disorders. Don't worry if you're one of the people who can touch their nose with their tongue though you're probably fine unless you have super stretchy skin as well on the bright side that's quite a big collection of impressive uh, show was a mask yeah. of party tricks <laughs> everyone knows eggs are fragile home bakers will know you You spend most of your baking time making sure you don't accidentally break an egg outside of the mixing bowl, but they're also surprisingly strong. So strong, in fact, that it's almost impossible to break one by squeezing it. This has led to- What is almost impossible to break one? Like, uh, what, what was that man on TikTok? He said, Some built different and he cracked the egg with his, like, bicep. Like, I don't know to a huge collection of videos of men with big biceps being embarrassed because they can't break a little egg. <laughs> as funny as it is, there's a reason these strong men are being beaten by eggs. Even though eggs are easily cracked when you hit them on the edge of a bowl, they're designed to withstand pressure. If you squeeze it from both sides, like in your hand or between your giant arm muscles, the pressure is evenly distributed over the whole egg, making it very difficult to break. And actually, the stronger you are, the harder it is. Of all the abilities people wish they had, being super flexible is probably the one everyone would put at the top of their list. This ability. I wish I was flexible, but I can't. I, I'm not flexible at all. That's why only 3% of people can, like, no, I'm not is called hypermobility in medical circles. It's pretty rare and only about 20% of people have it and it lets you do all kinds of amazing things that other people could never dream of from little things like being able to touch your thumb to your forearm to bigger things like being able to put your head between your feet in a backbend. Scientists have discovered that the ability is probably genetic and it comes with other rare variations in your body that aren't as easy to see as your bendy abilities. Unfortunately, not all of these things are as desirable. Hypermobile people have an increased risk of asthma, for example, and they also have a larger amygdala than most people, that area of your brain that processes some of your emotions, so they have a higher risk of anxiety and an overactive fight or flight response. So maybe stop wishing you were that flexible, just do some stretching. Popping out your eyes isn't something most people would even dream of doing. Even the few people who've tried it can't do it easily or they'll just end up hurt. What is it, uh, squaring water out your eyes? I bet that's painful though. Have
pull your eye open, I don't know themselves so it's a very rare skill it's so rare in fact that some sources say ophthalmologists only encounter it once in their career and it was usually an accident so while this weird ability may look disturbing it's actually quite a talent to be able to do on command and just in case you're thinking that's a loose definition of the word Talent, this eye popping rapper actually took his skill on America's Got Talent and made it all the way to the semifinals with his act. So, if it's called a talent by the very people who judge talents for a living, then who are we to argue? That doesn't mean you should start trying it for yourself, though. Just accept it's not something you can do before you injure yourself. Rubik's Cubes are a classic game for a reason. They've survived the test of time because everyone thinks they can do it easily. Like, I don't know how to solve a Rubik's Cube. A Rubik's Cube like I tried so many times but I just don't know how to solve one. It's so hard. Until they actually pick one up and discover how hard it actually is. It's hard for a reason. There are 43 quintillion possible combinations on a Rubik's Cube, so how will you ever get the right one out of so many? A few special people actually can do it, but only 5.8% of the world's population. Still, as impossible as it seems to solve such a difficult puzzle, some people can do it, so surely anyone can, right? Of course, you'll never be able to compete with the world record holders or that guy who did it in 3.5%. For seven seconds, but it is possible to learn how. Solvers use memorized sequences of turns to solve a cube which is scrambled a certain way and you can learn those. There are tutorials that teach you all kinds of tips and techniques, so good luck! You might think that balancing is pretty basic, but not everyone has a good sense of balance. You probably- I mean, I don't, I don't got good, a good balance, but I, I taught myself how to ride a bike, but like I just got on it, I just started going like, I'm not, I told my parents not to like even show me like I just did it. I like I knew how to drive one. I mean ride one. We aren't even as good at it as you think you are. Have you ever tried standing on one leg with your eyes closed? <laughs> yeah, not as easy as you thought. Your ability to balance comes from your vestibular system, which needs multiple inputs from different parts of your body all working together to keep you upright. From the balance organs in your inner ear to your muscles and joints in your legs and spine and even the things you can see with your eyes, which is why it's harder to balance with your eyes closed. Luckily, you can teach yourself to have better balance unless you have a medical condition that interferes with a part of the system. Dancers who can balance on their toes aren't actually better than you. They just practice for hours every day to be able to do that, and so can you. The vast majority of people on Earth can only hold their breath for 30 seconds to 2 The longest I can hold my breath is for like a minute probably. I, probably not even that. I don't know. Minutes. Test yourself, and you'll almost certainly find yourself in that time frame. Some people can hold their breath for much longer, though, and we know this because the world record is 24 minutes and 3 seconds. He had help, though, by filling his lungs with pure oxygen first. Still, it's absolutely possible to hold your breath for more than 2 minutes, so how do you do it? There are lots of different breathing techniques you can use, like diaphragmatic breathing, vagal maneuvers to slow your heart rate, or increase your lung capacity with practice. According to researchers, a lot of of it is psychological, so training your brain not to panic helps too. <laughs> You'll be showing off in no time. If an argument about multitasking starts up, pretty much everyone will defend their amazing abilities to multitask. Pretty much all of them are wrong though. Actually, studies have shown that only 2% of people are effective multitaskers, making 2% of people are effective multitaskers? Multitasker? Tas taskers? Tasker? Taskers? What? a very rare ability. For us normal people, trying to multitask actually makes us less productive. Our work lives are pretty fast paced these days and you always think you can do more if you're already doing a lot. You might think technology helps, but if you work on a computer, you're likely to be distracted about every 10 minutes and those distractions lower your IQ by a shocking 10 points every time. Worse, if you have a desk job, probably losing more than 2 hours a day just being distracted by useless things. So what's the better way to get better at? It. Well, you can't. Most researchers just suggest getting better at avoiding multitasking completely. Luckily, there are plenty of resources that teach you how to do that and stop being distracted by everything. If you've ever been walking out in the snow without your favorite coat, you'll know just how hard it is to control how cold you are. But as it turns out, I mean, it could actually 
train your body to stand cold temperatures because like I started taking cold showers like right when I hopped in a cold shower like it's not even cold anymore right when I turn the water on it's not even cold anymore like I train my body to to teach me how to stand cold temperatures you know out. Some people can actually change their body temperature with their mind alone. Scientists went out to Tibet to study the few rare monasteries who study Jitamo meditation techniques, and they were amazed at what they discovered. Nuns in these monasteries could sit outside in below zero temperatures and somehow still manage to not only avoid getting colder, but actually increase their core body temperature up to 101 degrees Fahrenheit just by meditating. This is one you can do too, <laughs> kind of. If you're taught some of the techniques, you can learn to increase your own body temperature but not as much as the tibetan nuns can and i guess that's only fair since they've been studying how to do that all their lives but it just goes to show that you can do anything if you put your mind to it uh, anyway that was the video i, I hope y'all enjoyed can y'all like send me like videos to react to because like i, I need some